for tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Friday afternoon, March the 20th, 1992. Spring camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Dr. Bill Null of Salina, Kansas, is the teacher of the afternoon. This is one of two of the afternoon service. Dr. Bill Null is from Salina, Kansas, and he arranges his schedule so he can... Uh, slip away and leave the hospital for a day or two or a week, and uh, uh, it's a miracle that he can do that, but we appreciate the miracle the Lord does, and we appreciate the ministry that the Lord has given Dr. No, a ministry of deliverance. He delivers babies, and he delivers adults. In, Je in Jesus' name. Actually, I'm a pediatrician. I, just, I take care of babies when they get here. Oh, Lord God. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, bless this word this day, Lord, as it goes forth. Lord. Anoint it, Lord God, that it might break and rock the yoke, Lord God. So today I'm going to talk about familiar spirits. Uh, last camp meeting I talked uh, about the unseen enemy. And uh, if, you'll look, if you'll open your Bibles to Ephesians 6.12, we see Paul says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. And this is a verse that we took to structure, to show you the structure of Satan's kingdom. And Satan's kingdom is set up with principalities, which are evil angels, or powerful princes, with an area of responsibility, or an area of authority. That is an old English word, and it's uh, the only principality left today is the principality of Monaco. It is an area that is ruled by a prince. But in the spiritual realm, there are many principalities. And the enemy has divided up our, the world into principalities and has assigned evil angels over these. And the word that is... Uh, Arcane, which is in the Greek, which uh, signifies a structure like unto an army. Generals, colonels, majors, lieutenants, captains, sergeants, and so forth. And that is the structure of the enemy. That is the way he has structured his kingdom. Because Satan is a, uh, we, we talk about Satan being a created being. He can only be at one place at one time. He is not everywhere at once, as is the Holy Spirit. So he is dependent upon this highly structured kingdom to bring him reports as to what's happening in his kingdom on this earth. And we are caught in a conflict of kingdoms between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the enemy. And Paul makes that very plain that we're wrestling against him. And today we're going to talk about a, a particular type of spirit. Last time uh, uh, I can't give you the whole teaching on the unseen enemy. Uh, if you haven't heard it, you probably ought to listen to it, because it ties in directly with familiar spirits. But today we're going to talk about familiar spirits. Now, Satan has, a, has assigned to your family a certain line of spirits that stays with your family for generation after generation after generation. And these are assigned to harass you, to keep you in bondage, and to report on you. And you have spirits that are familiar with you. And in that context, a familiar spirit is one that is familiar with you. He's watched you from the day that you were born. He knows all of your habits. He knows all of your likes and your dislikes. And he can guess how you're going to react. Now, he cannot read your mind. The devil cannot read your mind. He can listen to you. And he can hear you. But he cannot read your mind. This was shown very clearly in Daniel. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and he called all the, all the 
the astrologers and soothsayers together. And he said, I've had a dream. I want you to tell me the dream and tell me the interpretation. And since he told no one the dream, here were the men who were most skilled in witchcraft and sorcery. Witchcraft and sorcery reached its zenith under the Babylonian Empire. Oh, the archaeologists today are absolutely amazed at some of the things that they were able to do. They were able to take the head off and bore holes in the head and all sorts of things. And they did this by witchcraft. It's still done today in the Philippines. It's still done in Mexico. But they could not tell the king what his dream was because they could not read his mind. Daniel, when he said he was going to put them all to death, including Daniel, Daniel asked him to wait. He said, there's a God in heaven who can read your mind. And so he went to, so God gave him the vision, and he went to the king, and he told him the vision, the interpretation. He said, it's not that I am so wise, but there is a God in heaven who has revealed this to me. So the devil can't read your mind. But he has these spirits that are familiar with you, that stay with you. They listen to every word you say. They know your personality. They know how you will probably react. And they can predict how you will react in the future. Today we're going to talk about another type of familiar spirit. It is, a, it is a spirit which a person is familiar with and has a relationship so that supernatural power can be manifested through him. It is a spirit in which a human being has a relationship with, and therefore they can use this spirit or to manifest supernatural power. And with this, I'm going to read you the scriptures, some scriptures from the Old Testament in the Bible, if I can find what I did with them. Leviticus 19.31. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after them, after the wizards, to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 26. The soul that turneth after such that have familiar spirits, and after wizards, to go a whoring after them, I will set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Leviticus 20, 27. A man also or a woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones and their blood shall be upon them. Deuteronomy 18.11, and this is a part of a, a long verse that runs about 10 or 12 verses, and it's a condemnation of the, of the occult, and it just says a charmer or a consulter, a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard or a necromancer shall be cut off. First Samuel 28.3, now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him, and buried him in Ramah, even his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Now, wizard is defined in uh, the concordance as one with a familiar spirit. First Samuel 28, 7. Then Saul said unto his servant, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment and went with two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me up to him whom I will name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest that Saul has done, he has cut off all those that have familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. Wherefore thou layest thou a snare for my life, and causest me to die. The woman knew it was against the law of God to traffic with familiar spirits. Saul knew it too. But why was he going to a familiar spirit? Because God would not answer him. Second Kings 
and he made his son, 2 Kings 21, 6, and, with, and he made his sons pass through the fire and observe times and use enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards and wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. There he's talking about my son. In 20, 23, 24, 2 Kings, Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Joash put away, that he might perform the words of the law that were written in the book that Hilaka the priest had found in the house of the Lord. Now going back in time a little bit to Chronicles 10.13, So Saul died for his transgressions which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one who had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. And so you see, Paul, Saul lost his life for going to the witch. Second Chronicles 33, 6, And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hena. Also he observed times and used enchantments and used wizards, and he wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And there we're talking about the wicked king Massa again. Now in Isaiah, Isaiah says in 8, 19, and when they shall say unto you, Seek out them which have familiar spirits, and wizards that peep, and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Isaiah 19, 3. The spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits and wizards. Their God was Speaking of his wrath, in Isaiah 29, 9, it says, And thou shalt be brought down, and shalt speak out of the ground, and thy speech shall be low, and out of the dust, and thy voice shall be as the one who hath a familiar spirit out of the ground, and thy speech shall whisper out of the dust. And so familiar spirits whisper, very quiet. <laughs> Twenty nine four. Praise God. Now you see, what we're talking about for unsaved people and for saved people as far as that goes. We're talking about witch doctors, sorcerers, diviners, enchanters, palm readers, card layers, astrologers, war charmers, water witches. Well, any type of supernatural act that's not of God. Now, the amount of your supernatural ability depends upon the power of the Spirit and your relationship with it. These spirits really hate you. They really do. They hate the people because they come from the kingdom of darkness. And Satan comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. It's his only purpose. You know, Satan hates you so bad. He really hates God. But he can't touch God. He rebelled against God. He can't touch God. But he can touch God's image. That's you. You are God made in God's image. And he can touch you. And therefore, he hates you so bad. That what he wants to do to you is he wants to kill you as slowly and as painfully as possible. And he wants to drag you through degradation, bondage, and degradation, utterly to destroy you. That's his aim. And if he can get you hooked into the supernatural from one of his spirits, then he can make you his slave. For the Word of God says, well, let's... Praise you, Lord God. Let's look at Romans 7. Let's look at Romans 6, I'm sorry. Romans 6, 13. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin to death or of obedience to righteousness? You present yourself. Let's look at John 8, 35, 34. Jesus answered him, 
Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. I mean, when you submit yourself to this familiar spirit and allow it to manifest through you, then you become its slave. You not only cursed yourself and your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren, but you may put yourself in a place of bondage to that spirit so that it can bring in other spirits more powerful than itself and drag you further down, give you all sorts of nice things like cancer, all sorts of very nice things, like headaches, migraine headaches, stomach ulcers, just things that you don't want. It comes because you have a relationship. You've opened yourself to that spirit. Now, there are two sources of supernatural power. One is the power of Satan, and the other is the power of God. Let's look at Acts 26, verse 18. Here, Paul, in his testimony before Agrippa, he says in Acts 18, he says, to open their eyes. Here, this is God. This was God's commission to him, is to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance from souls who are sanctified in me. But you see, there are two kingdoms there: the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. Let's look at Joshua 24. Joshua is tall. He's old. He's dying. All the elders who've been with him are, de are dead. All the men who came across the Jordan. And he's talking to the young people. And he says in verse 13, I've given you a land, speaking of the Lord, I've given you a land which you did not labor, cities which you did not build, and you dwell in them. You eat of vineyards and olive gold which you did not plant. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, and serve him with sincerity and truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river in Egypt, and serve the Lord. And then he says, But if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. For the gods which your father served, which were on the other side of the river, are the gods of the Ammonites in whose land you dwell. But for me, as for me and for my house, I will serve the Lord. You have to choose. Who are you going to serve? Mary chose, and she said, Be it unto me according to your word. I say to you that you have to commit yourself to God and choose to serve Him. Now, you're going to serve somebody in this life. God says you're going to serve somebody. You're going to serve a spiritual power. You can choose to serve Almighty God who loves you and died for you and has prepared a place for you. Or you can choose to serve the enemy who hates you and whose told desire is to torture you, torment you, and kill you and take you to the lake of fire. You know, that is such an obvious choice. I can't imagine anyone that there are people who think they can sit with both feet in both camps and do their own thing. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 10.20, But I say to you, the things which a Gentile sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. The word Gentile there should be, say, but the things which the heathen sacrifice, that word actually means heathen, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. If you sacrifice to idols, and dealing with a familiar spirit is, for, is to go or is spiritual whoredom, according to God, you're sacrificing to a demon. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you a question now. I don't want anybody to misunderstand me. How many of you have a familiar spirit? How many of you have a spirit through which supernatural power is manifested? I hope you all have the Holy Spirit. I hope you're all familiar with the Holy Spirit, because through the Holy Spirit, supernatural power should be manifested in your life. You notice all the Scriptures came before the Holy Spirit was poured out. At that, 
In the time the Old Testament was written, the Holy Spirit was poured out on a few prophets. But praise God, Jesus said he will send Paraclete, our Comforter, who is a familiar spirit, I hope, to all of you. And so you won't time that the term familiar spirit used in the New Testament, because all of you have a familiar spirit. It is a familiar spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. I hope it's the Holy Spirit. It is possible for a reborn Christian to be deceived and to move by a familiar spirit. I know people who are deceived and moved by a familiar spirit. They think is God. And it is very, very hard to minister to these people. I mean, it is extremely difficult. And I want to talk to you today about the familiar spirit that parades as the Holy Spirit. If you talk to someone, a spiritualist in the spiritualist church, and he will tell you that this is a gift of God. Oh, I could never. You ask a, a, a person who has a spirit of divination, and you ask him what the score is going to be on the football game next week, and he said, oh, I could never use a gift of God to make money. Now, he's deceived. He thinks that spirit is from Almighty God. It is not. You take the Christian scientist. Some of the nicest people I know are Christian scientists. A Christian science practitioner is a witch. She moves, or he moves, by a familiar spirit. They do not believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. Mary Betty Becker, Baker Eddy's book says the ridiculous blood of Jesus Christ is what she says. Oh, God. God help us. And, but they will manifest supernatural. Now, when you go to the devil's counter to deal, you don't deal down, you deal up. Now, my witchcraft forebearers used to do exorcisms. And when they talked to the demon, they would call him little brother. Please. And they swapped spirits. A spiritualist exorcist takes the spirit into himself. If you've got a bad spirit that's causing you headaches, that man will take that spirit and bite that spirit into himself. Now, that's dedication for you. But uh, if you've got a problem over here, you know, and you, uh, and you need some help, a bad spirit for you might be, I've got just what you need, and he'll give it to you. <laughs> Or if you go, in, you go into, the, into a spiritual church and that exorcist will start at the back of the church and run forward and throw himself in there and trying to throw the spirit out of his body. And he will do this till he's utterly exhausted. But they are, and, they, and all they want to do is help people. They'll help you. They'll give you something. You be careful who you let lay hands on you. Paul says, be, don't hastily lay hands on any man. And by conversely, I say, be careful who you let lay hands on you. Praise you, Lord God. It is possible, it is possible for a, a Christian to take, another, to take another spirit. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 11, 4. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a disparate gospel which you have not accepted, it may well put up with it. Well, Another interpretation of that is if you receive a spirit different from the one that you received to start with. And what Paul is saying in here, they've had some people come in and start ministering a different spirit. And the spirit, of course, was legalism. They had people coming in to the Corinthian church and they were ministering legalism to them. Spirit of iron legalism. Paul says, if you're accepting a spirit different from the one that you received, you're in trouble. Now, you can accept a spirit different. You know, you be careful in your churches who you let minister the baptism in the Holy Spirit. One of the things that I've always noticed about people with Jezebel spirits, when some, they'll prey on the weak Christian, the new Christian, and the hurting Christian. 
But boy, when they get somebody saved, they are right there, Johnny, on the spot to pray for them to get the Holy Spirit. And you know, Acts uh, 3, 6, Peter said to the men, man at the beautiful gate, he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he gave the man Jesus. But these people, what do they have to give out? They got a spirit of witchcraft and Jezebel and, and deception to give out. And they can, those people can get filled with false tongues. The Buddhists pray in false tongues. You ever heard demonic tongues? Satan is praying in tongues. And people say, I know it's God because it was in tongues. I said, yeah, you don't know whose tongue, though. Praise you. So, now that I've done all of this, say, so how can you tell? How do you decide what is the Holy Spirit and what is the familiar Spirit? First Thessalonians 5.19 says, test everything. First John 1 John 4.1 says, try the spirits, beloved. Let's look at First John 4.1. Because, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they be of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you will know the Spirit of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. It is a spirit of Antichrist. And the word Antichrist means instead of Christ. Which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Well... I never did have any spirits talk to me with an audible voice, so I had a real hard time saying, saying, acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God has come in the flesh. But he talked to me. Except in my mind. I heard voices in my mind. And so those I tested with this. And if you have one that speaks to you, I take that back. I saw a vision once. I had been studying a long time. And I had been studying. I was teaching on angels. And I had been studying for three or four hours, and I had been writing, and I was very tired. And I sat back, and this beautiful white creature appeared in my living room. It was just absolutely magnificent. I just looked at it, and I said, Acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God come in the flesh. And I said, Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Beautiful. And I did not get to see the face. All I saw was the white the white raiment was so shining, it was so dazzling, that's all I could see. But I thought I had, I did, that came out without me thinking about it. It came out of my mouth. Now, Derek Prince and Kenneth Hagin have written extensively on this subject, and I'm afraid that I, I, am, I have to acknowledge that I have borrowed from them, that I didn't, that this is not original with me. Both of them extensively for years, and so I, I must give them credit. Number one, the Holy Spirit always agrees with the letter and the spirit of Scripture. Let's look at 2 Timothy 3.16. If you have a revelation that you feel is from the Holy Spirit, it will always agree with Scripture. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3.16. For all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Actually, the Greek says it's God breathed. Is profit for doctrine, for reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. All Scripture is written by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will not contradict Himself. Now you must realize that you that the that the devil can quote. He quoted it to Jesus in the temptations. He quoted the Psalms to Jesus when he told him to jump off the temple. He said, "Jump off the temple, because the angels are going to pick you up and let you float down." But read Scripture in context. Read three verses above and three verses below so you can get the context in which the Scripture is given. Now, if you will let me, script, if you will let me quote Scripture out of context, I can tell you that you ought to commit suicide and that you ought to do it today. No. Scripture says Judas went out and hung himself. Jesus said, you go and do likewise. And he said, what? Do do it right now. Now those are three scriptures. They're all out of context, so and the devil will quote these scriptures out of context. So you read. Be a student of the Bible. Study your Bible. 
know your scripture, and he will hit you when you don't have the book at hand. Or the concordance to go look it up. So put the word of God in your heart. Read through the Bible every year. You only got to read three and a half chapters a day. You do that, you'll read it every year. It should be your goal to read the Bible at least once a year, as a minimum. Praise you, Lord. Number one, we'll always agree with the letter and the, and the spirit of the Scripture. Number two, the end purpose of any prophecy is exhortation, edification, and comfort. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 14.3. But he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation. And Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. And when he prophesies, when he speaks to you, the end result should be edification, exhortation, and comfort. It also says that the Holy Spirit comes to convict men of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He will convict you of your sin. He will convict you. He will not condemn you. If you get into a place where you feel condemned in which there is no hope, that is not God. God will never condemn you. He will convict you, but he will show you the way out. For he says in Scripture, But if we confess our sins, Jesus Christ is faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Praise you, Lord. Number three. Let's look at John 16, 13 and 14. And Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he says, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will speak of his own, he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, he will tell you of things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Yet always the end purpose, is always to glorify Jesus Christ. If the end purpose is to glorify the nomination, if it is to glorify any person other than Jesus Christ, an institution, you're probably dealing with a religious spirit. How many of us have religious spirits? Hmm? I uh, belong to a church in which, uh, after I was saved, I taught Sunday school for a number of years. I, I went in and talked to this priest after I, and asked him what had happened to me, and he told me that I had been reborn. That's what he said. You have had a reborn experience, but it is genuine, and I want you to teach Sunday school. And he put me to work. And when he retired, they put me to work teaching confirmation. And I taught the doctrine that the wine changed into the actual blood and body of Jesus Christ. I taught that to the children. And uh, God removed me from that church. But I felt that I had to always go back. They had an 8 o'clock communion service, and I always went to the 8 o'clock communion service on Sunday. I just I had to go to witness to these people, is what I said. But I never witnessed anybody. I went and took communion and left, like a good, obedient person. You know, we all go in and... You go up and they give you the wafer and a drink out of the jug and then you leave. And everybody runs like when they when you get through. Nobody stays around. There's no fellowship. Sometimes there was fellowship at the country club when we went out to eat breakfast. But uh, after I got saved, I found I didn't have a whole lot in common with them. And uh, one day I was at a deliverance church and uh, they were calling for workers and I held up my hand and the pastor pointing to the man who was assigning workers, and he misunderstood him, and he assigned a worker to me. And so we sat down in the back of the church, you know, and we didn't know who was ministering to who. And he looked at me, and he said, Does the word transubstantiation mean anything to you? I, I always slaughter that word. But I said, Well, that, yes. Uh, I was in a church that taught that, and I taught that Sunday school. He said, Well, let's, uh, let's bind that thing and cast it off. And I said, well, if you say I wanted to leave, it almost took my throat out when it came. And it cut me through from the denomination of the church. I didn't have to, suddenly I didn't have to go to communion anymore. And I had been coming, ministering deliverance with a deliverance group over three years. 
God had brought in people from 200 miles away for deliverance. He ministered to deliver several, almost every other night or every night for three years. And I had that thing in me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me. And it came out simply by word of knowledge by Buzz Minosh. Not the word of knowledge. And he just, I, I renounced it in the name of Jesus and said, You're there, I want you to leave. I didn't think I had anything. I thought I was clean. But I found out I had a religious demon in me, tied back to a denomination. I think all of you should think about that. It holds you from bondage in very subtle ways. Praise you, Lord. It produces the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. <clears throat> Let's look at Romans 14, 17. Romans 14, 17 says, The kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness comes first in your peace and your joy. When someone be saved, you look to see if they have a change in their life. You know, no change in their life. You wonder about their salvation. I once uh, was at a, uh, at a meeting in in Dallas, and Father Rembrandt was there. He was a Lithuanian priest who had been in jail, in a Russian jail, for 25 years, and he was up testifying. I had the good fortune to meet him and talk to him, and he showed me a picture of two Russian prisoners. And he said, this one has been sentenced to jail for five years, and this one for eight years for witnessing on the street. And in my naivety, I said to him, Boy, I bet they don't have much trouble with folks witnessing on the street, giving our jail terms like that. Far came in that old man's eyes, and he looked at me, and he said, Son, you don't witness. He said, Son, all true Christians witness. You don't witness. I doubt your salvation. I convicted me. I said, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yes, sir. And... When I got set free from my demonstrational bondage, I found I was able to witness a great deal better. It happened shortly after that. Praise you, Lord. Righteousness comes first. Let's look at the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is the end result, which is in Galatians 22. Galatians 5:22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the things, uh, those are all manifestations of agape love. That is what the Holy Spirit will produce in your life. At the top up there is the works of the flesh. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, suspiciousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbirth of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, drunkenness, murder, revelation, and the like. If it produces that in your life, you know it is not. Praise you, Lord God. Matthew, let's look at Matthew uh, 7. Jesus says to you, Matthew uh, 7, 17. Well, let's go back to 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, and a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor a bad tree good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown in the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Now, brother Jack says you look at the tracks. Look at the tracks and see where they've been. You know that he's got the. Sheep's hide on him, but he's still got the wolf's feet. You look at his tracks and see where he's been. What does that, what does that spirit produce? Does that spirit tell you you're supposed to divorce your husband? Divorce your wife? Tells you it's all right to go sleep with this other lady because your wife is having headaches all the time? Hmm? Tell you it's all right to commit adultery because your wife, you know, she's really mistreating you and she's cut you off and this other lady understands you. That's the Holy Spirit. I've heard people tell me that the Holy Spirit told them it was all right. I had a young man that we cared through deliverance him. He got gloriously delivered, got a scholarship to a college. 
I mean, he did beautifully. He went down there, met a nice Christian girl. They fell in love, and uh, and the Lord told him it was all right to move in the apartment to job. I said, when did the uh, voices come back? He said, right after I slept with her. Amen. I mean, the Holy Spirit will not lead you into breaking God's law. Let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty. Praise God. Let's look at James 2.12 then. So speak, and so do those who will be judged by the law of liberty. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that you're free to do anything that you want to? No. Paul says in Romans, let's look at Romans 10. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry, it's Romans 13. For no one, oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves one another has fulfilled the law. In verse 10, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Praise you, Lord. In Galatians, yeah. you have, Paul says, you shall not use your liberty as a license for lasciviousness, which means uh, sin in every direction, any way you can think of it. You shall not lose, use that. Let's look at Rome, Galatians 5.13. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law has been fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so it is the law of liberty. It's the law of liberty to do anything that you can do in perfect agape love. If you can do it in perfect agape love, you're at liberty to do that. But the law... but. The Spirit will not lead you into bondage. It will not lead you into confusion. It will not lead you into fear. Romans 8.15 says, We have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. Any time that a, a revelation leads you into bondage, you know, God will allow you to make a free choice. You choose to serve him. The devil will put you in bondage and drag you in. And once he's got you in bondage, any of you have ever been addicted to cigarettes, you know what that means. That means you may want to stop smoking and you may put that cigarette up on the cup there, but that thing just sort of draws you. You get a headache and you get nervous and you get and all kind of, you get all kind of bad symptoms until you smoke that cigarette. That is bondage. An alcoholic can want to stop, and he can try, and he can hold on to his flesh until his flesh, but he will eventually yield to it. He is in bondage to it. A whoremonger may want to stop, and he will stand against it, but he will eventually yield. He cannot stop because he is in bondage to that spirit. God can deliver him from that bondage if he will call upon the name of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14.33 says, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. 2 Corinthians 11.3 says, he talked about 3.11, I'm sorry, 11.3. He said, I fear that somehow lest the serpent as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The gospel is simple, people. And the tutors of the Holy Spirit, the gospel can be made very plain to you. When somebody stands at this podium and says to you, I have a very deep revelation. Now, some of you will probably, only a few of you will be able to receive this. Run for the door. The dump truck is about to unload. It ain't the Holy Spirit. Because with the Holy Spirit, the gospel is simple. Now, sometimes something sort of sticks out, and it takes a little while for it to come in. But God will make it plain to you that Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, is so very simple. 
It says, submit to me. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But you submit to him means that you become God's slave and you serve him and to be obedient to him. And he's prepared a place for you in heaven and will protect you from the enemy. The devil says, you serve me and I'll drag you into bondage and I'll torment you and kill you and take you to the lake of fire. And he will give you all, he will confuse your mind with deep revelations. These people get, these people have intellectual spirits, familiar spirits. I know a, uh, a good friend of mine who will probably be one of the leading liberal theologians of our century. He's extremely brilliant. He has an intellectual demon. He never forgets anything that he reads. He's and he doesn't know Jesus Christ, and he teaches in seminary. He has an intellectual knowledge of him. And you look at him, and you can see the demon staring out of him. And he will confuse you. He will lay out all these doctrinal lines that you just, you, you come away, your mind is wheeling. You say, oh God, I'd just like the poor Jews who said, they said when the rich man couldn't be saved, the they said to Jesus, he said, well, who can be saved? Now, why did they say that? If the rich man can't be saved, who can be saved? Because the rich man didn't have to work for a living all the time, and he could learn all the rules and keep them. He could sit down in the synagogue and learn all those thousands and thousands, those 12, 15 volumes that they had put together, the Pharisees and the legalists had put together, so he could legally keep the law. They had defined everything to the point they had taken the, the, the law and they had defined it and defined it till one set had 60 volumes. The Babylonian set had 60 volumes. Defined everything. That there shall be no work done on the Sabbath. There were a whole volume on what's work. This is the end of part A. Please play part B. Thank you. Our website is www lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. For tapes of end time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is now the conclusion of this message from Part A of the Friday afternoon service of March the 20th, 1992. Spring Family Camp Meeting, being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Dr. Bill Null is the speaker of this service. To find everything, that there shall be no work done on the Sabbath. There were a whole volume on what's work. And so when, on the tutors of the Holy Spirit, God is not the author of confusion. Something confuses you. You put that one up on the shelf and ask God to show it to you. Now, sometimes... You will hear something from this pulpit that you don't quite agree with, that you don't understand. It doesn't mean it's not from God. It means that you put it up on the shelf and you say, God, you show me. Holy Spirit, show me that. If it's of you, God, and if it's of God, he'll show you. If you want to know it. If you want to know. That's a big thing. If you want to know. Now, some people say, show me, God, and they have no intentions. They've already made up their mind, and they, they don't want to hear the truth. God will witness it to you once or twice, and you keep rejecting it. He says, because you have rejected the law of the Lord, I shall reject you from being priest over me. And because you have forgotten the law of God, because you've rejected knowledge, I'll reject you as a priest over me. And because you have forgotten the law of the Lord, I will forget your children. That's the curse of the of whoredom. It's in Hosea 9. Okay. Let's look at one more thing. Let's look at Deuteronomy 18, 22. 
when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord. Yet that thing does not come to pass. That thing, it is a thing which the Lord has not spoken. The, spoken, the prophet has spoken presumptuously. He should not be afraid of him. I mean, if he says this is going to happen, it doesn't come to happen, it doesn't happen, it's not God. Now, sometimes uh, that usually happens in prophecy, and sometimes a prophet will overstep his uh, measure of faith. One of the things I've learned about prophecy is that it is very hard. God doesn't have the same time frame you and I have. And sometimes you have to wait. Let's look at Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 5. If there arises among you a prophet or a dream of dreams that gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder comes to pass of which he spoke, saying, Let us go after other gods which we have not known, let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and you shall serve him and hold fast to him. But that prophet or that dream of dreams shall be put to death. Because he has spoken in order to turn you from the Lord your God. Praise God. Now you must realize that in Acts 16, 16 to 18, there was a girl in Ephesus who had a spirit of divination. Not Ephesus, uh, Philippi, who had a spirit of divination. And she spoke the truth. She said, these are the prophets of the Most High God who come. Listen to them. But she had a spirit by which she could foretell the future and made much money for her owners. And when they cast that spirit of divination out of her, the owners got upset because they couldn't, she could not divine anymore. Therefore, they were angry at Paul and said, you've earned our property. A, a person with a spirit of divination can project the future sometimes. Just because it comes to pass, it doesn't mean it's of God. I have seen people with witchcraft spirits make very general statements, and then when they come to pass, say, you see, that was God. I have seen people with divination spirits give precise words of knowledge, like they're reading your mail. Because they have a familiar spirit within them that talks to the familiar spirits that are familiar around you and tells them. You've all seen the shows where the man sits up on the stage blindfolded and the, his associates go out and they pick in his silver dollar over the year 1936 D and he holds it up and the man tells him exactly what it is and he tells him what he's got in his pocket and what the man's name is. That's all done by familiar spirits. Uh, pickpockets. How do you think the pickpocket knows who's got money in his pocket? He has a man who divinates, who stands outside the bank and waits for someone to come out with money, and he signals him, and the dip goes by and picks it up, and the other man takes it off of him. And that's done by divination. It's done by evil spirits, by familiar spirits. Praise you, Lord. And so, let us look back now. Number one, the Holy Spirit always agrees with the letter and the spirit of Scripture. Number two, the end purpose is exhortation, edification, and comfort. Number three, it will always glorify the person of Jesus Christ. Number four, it will produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. Number five, it gives you the spirit of liberty, the spirit the, the liberty to do anything in perfect love to your neighbor. If it produces bondage, confusion, or fear, it is not from God. If it's about the future, if it's from God, it will always come true. But even if it does come true, it does not necessarily mean it's from God. You have to look at the source. And the last thing is, 1 John 2, 7 says, We have an anointing that abides within us. And, you, and there are times when you have to depend on your anointing. You say, Is this of God? But it's wise to test everything and to be careful. Now, there are people... Let's look at Hosea 5, 9, 4. Hosea 4. I'll get it right in a minute. Hosea 4, 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because they have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being a priest over me. And because you've forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. There are nine things, eight things in this, that uh, the outworking of this curse. It's called the spirit of whoredom. Number one, you reject it from being a priest. Number two, God forgets your children. Number three, you change your glory to shame. Number four, gluttony. Number five, it's sterility. Number six, 
is divination. Number seven is horlotry and adultery. Number nine is devour, devouring your crops. Now, uh, uh, it takes me an hour to really go into this curse, but those are the outworkings in your life. And it's because you or your ancestors have tampered with familiar spirits. You have worshipped idols. You have dealt with the supernatural power. You've been to the card layer. You've been to the fortune teller. You've looked at the horoscope. You've dealt with the shishang sticks. You have div- dealt with other divinations, with the Ouija board. I have a long list of, of different divination arts that you have trampled or hold after supernatural knowledge that did not come from God. Some people who just want to know what happens, you know, things that they don't really have any reason to know. And therefore, they go to the card layer and ask the card layer. And this brings you under a curse. We're going to break the curse. Now, if your forefathers did this, it goes four generations. That's back to 160 years. Any idea, anybody got any idea of what their blood kin was doing 160 years ago? The curse of incest goes back ten generations. That's a hundred, that's a 1,027 people. Ten generations back means it goes back for a thousand to, it goes back 400 years. Your blood kin. And you're blood related to 1,027 people. And if any of those people commit incest on the way down, the, the curse renews itself. The same is for the bastard curse. The same is for the curse of whoring after other gods. So, I, this is a way that, uh, great number of the homosexuals, the people who say that they were born homosexual, that the homosexual spirit was there when they were born, comes in through this curse of whoring. Window peeping, peeping toms, sexual deviants, pediophiles, all come in under this curse of whoring. We're going to break this curse today. Now, the, uh, going, going into mass deliverance, how many of you all have... Uh, Ever been in a mass deliverance service or have not been in a mass deliverance service? Everybody here has been in a mass deliverance service? We're going to talk about spirits. Now, in a mass deliverance service, I will lead you through a, a rather long renunciation prayer, and then I'm going to call out some spirits. What I want you to do is put both feet on the floor and agree with me in your mind. I don't want you to pray in tongues. I don't want you to call on the name of Jesus. I want you just to agree with me that it's going to come out. I will bind it by the authority of God, Jesus Christ. And you agree with that, and you push this thing out with your will. Now, spirits are are breath. The word for for spirit in Hebrew is nephah, which means breath or wind. And... uh, what you do is you just push it out. It comes out of your mouth, out of your breathing passages generally. Cast out in dictionary means to give a quick jerk and vomit. But generally, it comes. sometimes it comes out quietly through your ears. Sometimes it comes out with a roar, with a scream. Sometimes it just, you cough and it's gone. Belch. It's up to God how it comes out. So let it go. Don't hold it back. Don't be afraid that you may lose your dignity. And you got your choice of your dignity or your demons. You let your dignity go. You get your, get rid of your demons. You get your dignity back. I once took my son to a mass deliverance service, and I was sitting there with him, and I had my arms around him, and they were both of My son was on one side, and my daughter-in-law was on the other. Both manifested, and I had my son. And my son said, "I'm afraid I'm make a fool out of myself." I said, "Son, you can either let your de- demons go and get your dignity back, or you can keep your demons." And he decided to let the demons go. He got his dignity back after service. I said, I'm the only one in here that knows you besides me. We're not going to tell anybody. Praise the Lord. I'm going to uh, lead you in a renunciation prayer. I want you to repeat it after me. And we're going to renounce a few things, and then we're going to break some curses. And then we're going to call upon the name of the Lord. Say, Dear Lord, Lord, with honesty of heart, heart, humility of soul, Conviction of spirit. Do I make the following confession? I've sinned against you. Disobeyed your word. Whether it be through willfulness, ignorance, 
of curiosity. I do now repent of these sins and ask you to forgive me through the blood of Jesus Christ. By an act of my will and in the name of Jesus, I close all those doors which I have opened to Satan. I now ask you, dear Lord, to help me renounce all these things and cleanse me in body, soul, and spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce the following things. The occult, witchcraft and magic, seances, clairvoyance, mediums, contact with familiar spirits, Ouija boards, all occult games, fortune telling, palm reading, tea leaf reading, crystal balls, tarots, pendulum, astrology, interest in horoscopes and signs of the zodiac. I renounce the heresy of reincarnation and all healing groups involved in metaphysics, all hypnosis, mind reading, mind control, second sight, ESP, parapsychology, water witching, dowsing, levitation, body lifting, table tipping, automatic writing. I renounce astral projection, soul travel, thought projection, and other demonic skills. I renounce all mind control, power of positive thinking, positive control salesmanship, and the mnemonic power to impose my will on others. I renounce all sorcery, dependence on talismans, such as St. Christopher's medals, Mary medallions, good luck charms, rabbit's feet, four-leaf clovers, wishbones, potions and almonds. My vow will destroy any on my person or under my control. I vow will destroy all idols to foreign gods such as Buddhas, Mexican sun gods, signs of the zodiac, American Indian dolls, voodoo dolls, Egyptian acras, pentagrams, or other abominations on my person or under my control. I renounce all literature that I have read in these fields and will destroy that under my control. Praise you, Lord God. I break all curses, hexes, jinxes, spells, vexes, and charms placed, placed on me from an occult source. I break the curse of illegitimacy ten generations back on my family line. I break the curse of idolatry. And I renounce any oaths all my ancestors ever made to any false god, idol, false cult, religion, Brotherhood, Lodge, Fraternity or Sorority, or any order which is of a demonic or witchcraft origin. I break all demonic sub subjection 
demonic soul ties, demonic soul ties. A, bondage a bondage to my mother, to my, mother. My, father. my father, my grandparents, my grandparents. spouses, spouses. Ex-spouses, ex-spouses, or any other human being, any other human being. now living or dead, who has ever dominated me, or control me, anyway, contrary to the will of God. I break all curses of psychic heredity, any demonic hold on my family line, as a result of disobedience of any of my ancestors. Spouses or ex-spouses, I break the curse of whoredom on my family and my lineal descendants forever in the name of Jesus. I break any curses of mental illness, physical illness off my family line. I break any curses sent to me. All my family, all my family. From, a from a call to demonic origin, and commanded to send, return to the sender, according to God's word. Dear Lord, Dear Lord I confess I've committed sexual sin. I, I do repent and ask forgiveness. I confess I have committed the following. I hear you quietly. Let the Holy Spirit show you anything that you know of. You quietly confess it to God under your breath. You don't have to tell the world, just Jesus. I claim cleansing by the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I do now accept your forgiveness and cleansing according to your word. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. My Lord and Savior, notify you. I am claiming all areas. I previously yield to you. I close all these doors forever. Specifically, I claim freedom from sexual sin and lust. I bind you and your host and command you Believe me now, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I have another confession to make. I have not loved, Lord, but I have resented certain people. I confess this is sin. I call upon you, Lord, to help me forgive them. I now forgive. At this time, you just sit and let the Holy Spirit witness to you anybody that's ever hurt you, anybody that you have ought against, anybody who's ever cheated you, anybody who's ever dominated you, who's hurt you, stolen from you, anybody that you have bitterness against. When you think about it, bitterness comes up, you feel bitterness, resentment, and you need to forgive them. Ask God to bless them. For it's in asking God to bless them that we get healed. Lord, I ask you to bless these people according to your word. I ask you to bring them into salvation and bless them abundantly in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and rose from the dead. You redeemed me by your blood. I belong to you. 
I'm going to live for you. I confess all my sins, known and unknown. I'm sorry for them, Lord. I renounce them all. I come to you as my deliverer. Lord Jesus, claim in the promise. In Joel 2.32, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Lord, you know my needs. That thing that binds me, torments me, defiles me, that evil, unclean spirit. I call upon you, Lord Jesus, deliver me and set me free. Lord, set me free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. It's a rather long renunciation prayer. Now, I want everybody to stand up and stretch their hands out and praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we praise you and we bless you and we glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise your name, Lord God. Praise your name, Lord. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Pour your spirit out now, Lord. Let God pour out your spirit. Praise you and bless you and glorify you, Lord God. Praise Inhabit the praises, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. Let's everybody, everybody sit down now and put both feet on the floor. Crossing your legs and crossing your fingers is a witchcraft sign. So I ask you to keep both feet flat on the floor. Praise you, Lord God. All your spirits of rejection now. I come against you now in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against all spirits of rejection. Rejection by mother. Rejection by father. Rejection by friends. Rejection. The spirit of rejection, I bind you in Jesus' name. I command you to set God's people free. Turn God's people loose. These people are the other people of God. They've been bought by the blood. You've got no right to them. In the name of Jesus Christ. For Ephesians 1, 7, it says, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. These people have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Turn loose in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of them in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn loose now in the name of Jesus. Turn loose now. All of you, come out in the name of Jesus. Rejection. Rejection by mother. Rejection by father. Rejection by friends. Rejection by boss. In the name of Jesus. Turn it loose now. Rejection by the church. In the name of Jesus Christ. Turn on, come on out in the name of Jesus. All you saw, you rejection spirit. Turn it loose in the name of Jesus Christ. These children have been bought by the blood of Jesus. They've been accepted in the beloved. In the name of Jesus. Turn it loose now. Turn them loose now, all of you spirits of rejection. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Out in the name of Jesus. All you rejection spirits. Turn God's people loose. All you rejection spirits in the name of Jesus. All you spirits of lust. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Turn them loose now. Turn them loose in the name of Jesus. Come on out now, all you lust spirits. All you spirits of lust. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. All you, all you spirits of fear. Fear. Spirit of fear, I bind you, fear. Legion fear, I bind you. Fear of not being loved. Fear of not being wanted. Fear of the dark. Fear, fear of water. Fear of being alone. Fear of being hurt. Fear of being raped. Fear of man. Fear of sex. All your spirits in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn them loose now in the name of Jesus. Frigidity in the name of Jesus. Leave now in the name of Jesus Christ. All your spirits. Spirits of fear. 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 Bondage to fear. Witchcraft fear. In the name of Jesus, spirits of fear. Bondage to fear. Witchcraft fear. These fear, these are... We do not receive a spirit of fear. Again, to bind with a power, love, and a sound mind. Come on out, spirit of fear. Fear! In the name of Jesus. I bind you and I command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on out. Fear! All you spirits of fear now in the name of Jesus. Turn them loose now. Come on out, all you spirits of fear. Fear. Deep hurt and fear. Deep hurt. Fear. Deep hurt. 
Come on out. Deep hurt. Those who've been rejected and had deep hurt. Deep hurt. Turn them loose now. All you hurt spirits. All you spirits are hurt and sorrow in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All you hurt spirits. All you spirits of deep hurt in the name of Jesus. Turn God's people loose. Turn them loose now in the name of Jesus. These people have been accepted in the Beloved. They don't belong to you. You've got no right to them. You are a trespasser. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of fear. Fear. In the name of Jesus. Deep hurt. Deep hurt. Turn them loose now. All you hurt spirits. All you spirits of bitterness. Spirits of bitterness. 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 All you spirits of bitterness. A bull of bitterness. Come on out. Bitter spirits. Bitter spirits. Deep spirits. Spirits of bitterness and deep hurt in the name of Jesus. Turn God's people loose. All you spirits of bitterness in the name of Jesus. Bitter spirits. Praise you, Lord God. The bitter gall. The gall. Praise your name. Come on out. Deep spirits of gall and bitterness. Envy and jealousy. Bitterness. Envy and jealousy and gall in the name of Jesus. Turn God's people loose now. All of you now. Turn them loose now in the name of Jesus. Come on out. Come on out in the name of Jesus. Bitterness. Rebellion. Rebellion. I break the curse of rebellion in the name of spirits. Rebellion against God. Rebellion against parents. Rebellion against authority. Rebellion against the job. Rebellion against ordained authority by God. All you rebellious spirits, you bitter rebellious spirits, in the name of Jesus, turn them loose now. We break the curse of bitterness. We break the curse of rebellion in the name of Jesus. Turn them loose now. Rebellion against authority in the name of Jesus. Rebellion against the righteous authority of God in the name of Jesus. I'm going to have my way. I'm going to do my thing. All you rebellious spirits in the name of Jesus. I bind you. Rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Witchcraft in the name of Jesus. I speak to you. Come on out now. All you familiar spirits. All you spirits of the occult. I break the, I break the curse of the occult. Come on out now, all you witchcraft spirits, all you spirits of the occult, to the, the palm reader, the palm reader, in the name of Jesus. Come on out, palm reader, tea leaf reader, <clears throat> astrology, all you spirits of astrology, all you witchcraft spirits, all you spirits of divination, spirits of divination in the name of Jesus. Turn God's people loose, all you lying religious spirits, spirits of lying. All you spirits of lying, lying spirits, deceiving spirits, lying spirits, seducing spirits in the name of Jesus. All you seducing spirits, lying spirits. You can't lie to God's people anymore. For the God of truth has come. But the truth came with Jesus Christ. Truth came with Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came for Jesus Christ. He said, I am the light, the way, and the truth. You lying spirits, you're trespassers, you're on God's property. Jesus Christ bought their bodies and paid with His blood. You've got no right to them in the name of Jesus. All you lying spirits, turn God's people loose. All you deceiving spirits, turn God's people loose in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Turn them loose now. Turn them loose in the name of Jesus Christ. All you deceiving spirits, spirits of deception, spiritual deception in the name of Jesus Turn God's people loose. All you deceiving spirits, all you, you spirits of deception, all you spirits of witchcraft and deception, all you spirits of idolatry in the name of Jesus, turn God's people loose. Turn them loose now. All you paranoid spirits, all you spirits of paranoia, all you lying spirits in the name of Jesus, all you spirits of stubborn, stubborn self-will, stubborn spirits in the name of Jesus, all you perverse spirits, spirits of perversion, perversion spirits, perverse spirits, Argumentative spirits in the name of Jesus. Turn them loose now. All you spirits of perversion in the name of Jesus Christ that would pervert the righteous acts of God. Turn God's people loose in the name of Jesus. Praise your name. By the blood of Jesus. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sin. Romans 5, 9 says, How much more now we shall be justified by His blood and saved from the wrath to come. You hear me, demons? 
You hear me? These people have been justified by God's blood. They have been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. They've been made righteous just as if they'd never sinned. You've got no right to them. You're trespassing on them. You're trespassing on God's property. I bind you and I command you. I stand here and I command you to leave God's property now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, Hebrews 13, 12 says, Jesus suffered without the gate that He might sanctify His people with His blood. These people have been sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's by the blood they've been sanctified. They've been made holy and set apart for God. You've got no right to them, demons. In the name of Jesus, you turn them loose in Jesus' name. Come out of them in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you. I bind all of you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind all spirits of lust, all you lust spirits, all you spirits of lust, all you unclean spirits, all spirits of uncleanliness in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you. I bind the spirit of incest. I bind the spirit of incest. I break the curse of incest in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command the spirit of incest to leave you now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, go in Jesus' name. Go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Go. Spirit of incest, go now in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind the spirit of mental confusion, of confusion. I bind the spirit of witchcraft, or witchcraft mind control in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft mind control, I bind you. I isolate you from all other spirits. You can draw no power, no authority from any other spirit. In the name of Jesus, I bind you. And I say, go in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you. I break you loose from all authority. I break you loose in the name of Jesus Christ. You can draw no authority, no power from any other spirit. I bind you. And I say, be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn God's people loose. You've got no right. You're a trespasser. 1 Corinthians 6.13 says what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? You have been bought. You are not your own. You are not with corruptible gold or silver, with the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. A lamb without blemish. In the name of Jesus, turn these people loose. They are God's property. You've got no rights. You are trespassers. You must leave now in the name of Jesus. Go. Praise you, Lord. Spirit of bestiality in the name of Jesus Christ. I break the curse in the name of Jesus. Turn all the animal spirits to leave now in the name of Jesus. I break the curse. All familiar spirits. All you familiar spirits have come down to the family line. I break your authority. I come against all in spirits of infirmity now. I come against the spirits of infirmity. I come against the spirits of infirmity that cause cancer. I come against the spirits of cancer in the name of Jesus. All cancer spirits, I bind you now. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. For surely He has borne our infirmities and our sorrows and our sickness and our pain, and by His stripes we have been healed. Scripture says that Jesus Christ bore our infirmities. You come out in the name of Jesus, you spirit of infirmity, in the name of Jesus. I bind all you spirits of infirmity. I bind all the spirits of arthritis in the name of Jesus. I bind all the spirits of diabetes. I bind all the spirits of of high blood pressure. I bind all the spirits of heart failure. I bind all the destroying spirits that would destroy God's people. I bind all spirits of encephalitis. I bind all spirits of Alzheimer's. I bind all the infirmity spirits that would destroy God's people in the name of Jesus. And I speak healing and restoration to them. For Jesus, for our infirmities, and our sorrows, and our sickness, and our pain, and by His stripes we have been healed. I speak healing and re- I speak healing healing by the restoration of the stripes of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Now come against all infirmity spirits in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All you infirmity spirits, all you migraine headache spirits, all you diabetes spirits, all you hay fever spirits, all you allergy spirits, all you spirits that have come down to the family line, all you spirits of high blood pressure, all you spirits of heart attacks, all you spirits of stomach ulcers, all you spirits of of ulcerative colitis, all you spirits of cystitis, all you spirits, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind all of you in the name of Jesus. All you spirits of restlessness, all you spirits of nervousness, 
All you spirits of mental breakdown, I say be gone in the name of Jesus. Leave God's people now, for Jesus bore our infirmities and our sorrows and our sickness and our pain, and by His stripes we have been healed. By His stripes, by the stripes of Jesus, these people have been healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave them now. Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave them now. Go. Go in the name of Jesus. Praise your Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name, Lord God. Praise your name, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Praise your name, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I come against dysmenorrhea in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against the spirit of dysmenorrhea in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, be gone, leave God's people in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against unclean spirits. I come against the spirits of uncleanliness in the name of Jesus. All you unclean devils, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I say, be gone in Jesus' name. All you unclean spirits. All you spirits of epilepsy, all you deaf and dumb demons, all you spirits of perversion, all you perverse spirits in the name of Jesus, I come against the spirits of sexual perversion. I come against the spirits of fear of man. I come against the spirits of the lesbian. I come against the spirits of the homosexual in the name of Jesus Christ. All perversion spirits, all you... <clears throat> All oh, you old gentle sex spirits, I come against you and I say, Be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Be gone. The Lord rebuke you. I bind you and I command you to go. I curse you to your roots in the name of Jesus. Go in Jesus' name. All you unclean spirits. All you spirits of uncleanliness. All you spirits, leave God's people in the name of Jesus Christ. You've got no rights to them. You can't torment them anymore. I come against you in the name of Jesus. I come from the power of the third heaven. I stand at the foot of the throne of God. And I say, be gone in Jesus' name. By the authority of the living God, I come against you in Jesus' name. You cannot stay. You must leave in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Praise your name, Lord God. Praise your Lord. Oh, Jesus, we praise your name, Lord. By the blood of Jesus, by the blood, Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, Lord. You have redeemed your people, Lord God, hallelujah, Lord God. You have cleansed them, Lord. You have made them righteous, Lord God. You have sanctified them and made them holy, Lord God. You have brought them out of the hand of the devil, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Cleanse them, Lord. Send the hornets from heaven to drive out these things, Lord God. Lord, you'd send, you, you said you'd send the hornets before us, Lord God, to drive out the Canaanites and the Ammonites and the Pegasites and the Hittites, Lord. Send the hornets, Lord, to drive them out now, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Send the hornets, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Said you send your angel before us, Lord God, to drive out the land, to clean the land, Lord God. Turn them loose now, Lord God. Oh, God. Heal them, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. Set them free, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you and we bless you and we glorify you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord God. Praise you and bless you and glorify you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord God. Oh, Jesus, we come against AIDS now, the spirit of AIDS. We come against the spirit of AIDS in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against the spirit of chlamydia in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against the spirit of papillomavirus in the name of Jesus Christ. The human papillomavirus in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against all the viruses that Satan has turned loose in these latter days. In the name of Jesus, he's destroying spirits. We come against them. We bind them in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of God's people. All of you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind the human papillomavirus in the name of Jesus. I say, be gone in Jesus' name. I bind you. I curse you to your roots in the name of Jesus. I say, be gone in the name of Jesus. Cleanse God. God's people will be cleansed in the name of Jesus Christ. All you human papillomaviruses, go in the name of Jesus Christ. I say to chlamydia, go in the name of Jesus Christ. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. All you tuberculosis germs in the name of Jesus, go in Jesus' name. All you germs, 
all your infirmity spirits, in the name of Jesus, go now. Sit all blind trouble, go. All colon trouble, go. In the name of Jesus, I bind you all. Leave God's people. I come against herpes. I come against the herpes virus. Type 1 and type 2, I bind them in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, be gone. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you. I curse you to your roots. I say, be gone. For Jesus has borne our infirmities and our sorrows and our sickness and our pain. And by His stripes we have been healed. We've been healed by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the stripes of Jesus, the stripes at the whipping post. We've been redeemed by His blood. Out of the hand of the enemy, Satan, you've got no right to these people. You can't torture them anymore in the name of Jesus. Be gone now in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise your name, Lord God. Praise you and bless you and glorify you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come against the spirit of malaria and candidia in the name of Jesus Christ. Come against all the yeast infections in the name of Jesus. I come against all opportunistic infections in the name of Jesus Christ. And I bind them in Jesus' name. I bind them. I curse them to their roots in the name of Jesus Christ. For it has been said, for Scripture has said that Jesus Christ has borne our infirmities and our sorrows and our sickness and our pain, and by His stripes we have been healed. By the stripes of Jesus. I speak healing and restoration to God's people in the name of Jesus. And I say, infirmity spirits, be gone! Go! All arthritis, all scoliosis, in the name of Jesus. All tormenting spirits. I come against the spirits of torment. Tormenting spirits. Spirits that torment, that bind and torment God's people, that say they'll never be healed. They'll always be sick. They'll always hurt. It's always going to be this way. You're never going to get any better. That torment God's people. I come against a devourer that devours God's people's resources. I come against a spirit of devourer that devours God's people's resources. I rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus that's come to the horse of the curse of whoredom. I rebuke the devourer that would dissolve, that would, that would devour God's people's resources, that would put them under the curse of poverty. I rebuke the curse of poverty. I say to the spirit of poverty, be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Go, spirit of poverty. You can't have God's people anymore. I burn you, spirit of poverty. I rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus Christ. You can't devour God's people's resources. For His resources, God says, I am the source. All the gold and the silver is mine in a cattle of a thousand hills. All the gold and silver is God's. You can't have it. You can't have it. I rebuke you, devourer, in the name of Jesus Christ. Poverty, I rebuke you, you man in rags. I say, be gone in Jesus' name. You can't torment these people anymore. All you tormenting spirits, you leave God's people in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Go and go. Won't you stay here? I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. I loosen upon you the spirit of fire and destruction to burn you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Go in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, go. Praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Everybody hold up their hands now. Let's praise Him. Praise you, Lord Praise your name, Lord God. Praise you, Lord. Stand up. You can't praise him sitting down. Praise you, Lord God. Praise him. He inhabits your praises. The God of he, the God inhabits the praises of Israel. Oh, our God inhabits the praises of Israel. Oh, praise him. Praise him. Thank you, Lord God. Let the redeemed Lord say so, who has redeemed the hand of the enemy. Praise you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. You have redeemed us of the hand of the enemy, Lord. We praise your name, Lord God. Praise your name. Praise you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord. Now, Lord God, fill these people, Lord. Fill them, Lord. Oh, God, fill them full. 
Lord, I release on them. I release on them the spirit of grace, Lord God. Release the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ to fill them, Lord God. Fill every crack and cranny of their life, Lord. Fill them with Jesus, Lord. We need more of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, we need Jesus, Lord. We need more of Jesus. Jesus is our peace. Jesus is our peace. Oh, God, we need more of Jesus. We need more of Jesus. He is our healer. He is our redeemer. He is our Lord. He is our master. He is our everything. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord God. Praise your name. He himself is our peace. Thank you, Lord God. Fill your people, Lord. Fill them full now, Lord. Oh, God. Praise you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Think about the blood, Bill. The blood of Jesus. Praise you, Lord God.
We thank you for all that you've done for us this afternoon and, and what you yet do for us this weekend. I thank you for your anointing and your presence that's in our midst. I thank you for the Shekinah glory of that glory to be manifested over us as we gather to praise and to worship the Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you now for that which has been, prayer, been prepared for our physical bodies, making health to all of our flesh, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.